Hi, this is Pat Kelly. Okay, in this problem, we have this force field given to us, and the directions ask us to show that this integral uh, is independent of path for this force field. And then, as a second part to the problem, calculate the work that this force field would do on an object that's traveling from point P to point Q, okay? All right, now, the independent of path concept here, um, with this integral, what it actually equates to is uh, the idea of conservative that we've looked at before. So that is, independent of path is mathematically equivalent to the force field being equivalent, sorry, conservative, okay? So if you remember how to check for that, I'll do that in this space right here, we're looking to see if the partial of m with respect to y does that equal the partial of n with respect to x, all right? Question mark, I guess. I hope that looks familiar. You've done your homework on checking to see if an f function is conservative. It's the same work. So now let's do that work here. The partial of m with respect to y, so I'm looking at this first component, and I'm getting 18x squared times y. And I'm still wondering, is that going to end up equaling this other partial, the partial of n, here's my n, with respect to x, so that's looking like 18, 3 in front times 6, x drops down a power, the y is a constant, and the derivative of 1, of course, is 0. So take a look, those two are the same, so we get a check mark here. A check mark in terms of independent of path. All right. So what? It's actually really important for us in this problem, because remember the second part is that we're supposed to calculate the work that this force field would do on an object traveling from P to Q, but what's missing is we don't know what path that object took to get from P to Q. Did it go straight line distance? Did it do some kind of spiral? Who knows what it did? Who cares what it did? Because of this independent of path concept. It means we don't need to know the exact path. We do still need to evaluate this integral. And the way that we'll do that also falls back on one of our older skills, I hope you've practiced, is from our capital F function, you do want to be able to find lowercase f. So let's do some work to find that lowercase f of x, y. To do that, what we would typically do is realize that the uh, partial derivative of f with respect to x has to end up equaling the uh, m part of our force field function, so 9x squared y squared, and also realize, very similarly, is that the uh, partial of lowercase f with respect to y of xy will equal the n part of our force field function. So that's got to equal 6x cubed y minus 1. All right, from there then, I'll slide over. We end up integrating each of these with respect to the respective variables. So let's integrate this guy with respect to x, and that's going to tell me what f of x, y looks like with some uncertainty. So if I integrate this, I'm bumping x up to the 3 power, dividing by 3, so I'm looking at 3x to the 3 power, times that y squared. And the uncertainty that I mentioned is you need to remember that there might also be some further expressions involving y, and there might also be some constant, usually a k sub 1. All right. We also use this other partial derivative that we found to write f of xy by integrating this expression with respect to y. So y bumps up to the 2 power, divide by 2, so I get my 3x cubed times uh, y to the 2 power, 
minus 1 becomes minus y when we anti-differentiate, plus the uncertainty of, well, maybe there was something more involving x, and then also maybe there was some kind of constant. And then what we do is try to reconcile the differences and the similarities between these two guys. Uh, I think I'm just going to slip right down here. This should fit the uh, similarities between these two are obviously the 3x cubed y squared, so that's got to be in there in our final expression for f of x. The uh, minus y has to be there, and that must be what was the g of y up here. And there's nothing up here that showed up with, with just x, so there's nothing there, and there'd be some kind of constant which we usually just drop the subscript then and collapse the k1, k2 together. You're done. That's little f. What's the point? All right, now let's actually get to our answer to the problem. Let me come over here and well, I'll continue in pink, I guess. Continue the problem because the second part said to go ahead and evaluate this integral for an object that moves from, zero, from p to q, the 0, 0 up to the 5, 9 for us. Okay. What's the point of the work that we did, this is important, is remember the uh, relationship between capital F and little f. It's not just a coincidence that we're using that notation pretty much customarily in these problems, capital F for force field and lowercase f for what was called the potential function, if you remember that. But it's not a coincidence that we use f's there because what we're trying to say is that little f is an antiderivative of capital F, way back from Calc 1. So this integral equals, what we do is we, we jump right to F, uh, sorry, little f. We jump right to it, that 3x cubed, right, y squared minus y. And I'm not worried about the constant at all because this is a definite integral that we're going to evaluate the constants, you know, they would subtract. And the um, lower limit of integration would have been that 0.00, the uh, p point. And my upper limit would have been the 0.59. Again, what we capitalized on is that I'm trying to integrate capital F. We know an antiderivative of that. <coughs> Excuse me. That's this. Now you just plug and chug. So let's plug this in. Maybe I should have warned you ahead of time. I'm going to jump to a calculator, okay, for the plug and chug. The numbers get kind of big. I'm going to plug in 5, 9, 5 for x, 9 for y. So 3 times 5 cubed. Yeah, I know that's 125, but I'm going to go to a calculator anyway. And 9 squared, and yeah, again, I know that's 81, but I'm going to go to a calculator. Minus 9, right? And then subtract what happens when you put in 0, 0, but that's all going to blank out, so that's good. So I'm actually ready to go to that calculator. And I'll just plug in uh, 3 times the 5 cubed times the uh, 9 squared, and then minus 9 when I'm done. And I'm getting 30,366. See, I told you, I didn't want to do that without a calculator. All right, but that's our answer for this problem, all right? Practice some more on your own.